Good morning, uh, Senator Craven, Representative Farnsworth, and members of the Joint Standing Committee on Health and Human Services. Uh, it is truly a great privilege and honor to be here uh, before you today to present my bill to accept federal health care dollars to cover 70,000 Maine people, including nearly 3,000 veterans. LD 1578 would provide life-saving health care to tens of thousands of Mainers. It directs the state to accept 100% federal funding to cover more Maine families under the Affordable Care Act. This is an unprecedented bargain for the state. It is a great deal. Not only would it provide critical care to Mainers in need, it would also save the money in the state's general fund and generate hundreds of millions of dollars in economic activity. The federal government would literally pick up the tab for state programs, bring up state dollars for other key programs. Now, more than ever, it is critical for Maine to accept these federal dollars. And that's because on January 1, only a few short weeks ago, nearly 25,000 Mainers, including nearly 15,000 working parents whose children depend on them to stay healthy and go to work, are losing their health care. They lost this care for one very simple reason. And that is because state, the state turned down this bargain for these federal health care dollars. And like so many of you, I hear from constituents on many different issues. And this is one that I hear a lot about. Health care, the cost of health care, the access to doctors. And earlier this week, I had uh, truly a heartbreaking call from a woman named Amy. Her family lost her health care earlier this month. Her husband, the type 1 diabetic, he needs his insulin to stay healthy and truly alive. They went to Shaw's to fill the prescription. They were told it was going to cost $203 per bottle. They panicked. She was scared. She didn't know what to do. She picked up the phone and she called. They can't afford four to $600 per month for the prescription. She stressed to me, I work. My husband works. We just work for, for folks that don't provide health care. We don't have an opportunity. We don't make enough income to buy uh, private insurance. And you could hear in her voice the reluctance, uh, first to have called and asked for help, but the panic motivated her to do that. And her pride, she just wanted to stress, I'm not lazy, we work, my husband is sick, we need help. And Amy is not alone. You know, you know your neighbors, you know your family members that are in situations like this. And there are hundreds of people just like her and her husband and her family. You will hear from many people today <coughs> about their stories and the consequence of accepting and not accepting these federal health care dollars. And I urge you to really listen, as I know you always do. Over the past few months, I've worked to address some of the concerns I've heard from lawmakers about the original bill. And this bill, I, I'm happy to say, is truly tripartisan. It has four Republican co-sponsors, one independent, and five Democrats. It includes good faith efforts to bring all parties together and find a, a true compromise. And here are some of the provisions uh, in the bill. A sunset provision that after three years prior to the decline of federal funding going to 90%, the legislature would need to take a proactive step. And the good news is that we would have the experience of those three years to help us make that decision, to see are the cost savings truly there what has been the cost, what have been the savings, and really make an informed decision moving forward. The second is an opt-out provision and the federal, if the federal government breaks its commitment before those three years. For an example, they say three years, 100%, but it drops down to, to 99. The provision is in there to protect the state uh, against that. Third, it requires co-payments for individuals util utilizing the program, increasing to the maximum federal allowable amount. And the last, it creates a, a main care stabilization fund to pool savings accrued from, from accepting these federal health care dollars. We know that there will be savings within those three years. This provision is an attempt to establish a, an account to uh, account for future costs in the program. So again, this is a true compromise that I think we can all truly be proud of. <coughs> but even with those uh, compromises and the, the provisions in there, I'm ready and willing to consider 
any idea that will allow this life-saving health care for Maine families to move forward. It's too important and there's too much at stake. I think if we take the temperature down in the room, look at the facts, we can all agree to move forward. And these are the facts. Maine can prevent around 395 deaths per year by accepting these federal health care dollars. And these are not abstract numbers. Again, these are our family members, these are our neighbors, these are real Mainers. We, have, we will lose out on millions of dollars if we don't. We have an opportunity to save our state more than $600 million by accepting these federal funds, and that's according to the, the nonpartisan independent research institute, the, the Kaiser Foundation. So these are the facts. And with each day that passes, Maine loses out on an additional $700,000 a day. That's $500 per minute, totaling $250 million in additional dollars every year. Maine would also miss out on creating as many as 4,400 jobs and creating over half a billion dollars in, in uh, annual economic activity by the year 2016. So many of the people who, who could get health care if we accept these funds are Mainers. Obviously, they work at low-paying jobs. They work at our grocery stores.